Welcome to our ongoing series of videos on columns. We are in Chapter 5, Section 3, Sizing Steel Columns. We are continuing to perform these operations for some common sectional shapes including round pipe, hollow steel section square, and wide flanges. In our previous videos, in video A, we set up the methodology. In video B, we sized columns for lightly loaded conditions. Now in video C, we're going to size for heavy load cases. So before, we had a factored uh, axial load of 36. Now we're going to start with 100 kips of dead, 200 kips of live. When we factor those with the appropriate dead load factor and live load factor, we have a total factored axial load of 440 kips. We're going to assume the effective length of this column is 14 feet, such as we might have in a multi-story building. Um, again, we're going to size for pipe. hollow steel section square and wide flange sections. And the table's already filled out here, but we're going to go look at where we got these numbers from. So keep in mind the two important numbers are an effective length of 14 feet and a total factored axial load of 440 kips. So when we come to pipe, we're going to come down to 14 feet and we're going to scan across and we're going to discover that the only thing that will support 540, excuse me, 440, is this well and this well, and that's it. We could go to lower pipe sizes, but they're not going to have a chance. So we basically have an extra strong in the 12 inch and a double extra strong in the 8 inch. And when we look at the weights per linear foot, we see that this is less than that. So even though we're comparing an 8 inch to a 12 inch tube, 12 inch tube is lighter um, because it has a much thinner wall. None of the standard sections work, which doesn't surprise us because typically pipe is used for fairly slender columns and we're looking at a very heavily loaded situation. So we're having trouble finding anything in this table that even works. But in this case, the best one of the two options that are available is the extra strong 12 inch pipe, which weighs 65.5 pounds per foot and uh, is able to safely support or has a design strength and axial compression of 529. So we're going to go put 529 right here for the design axial strength and 65.5 as the weight per linear foot. And again the efficiency is this number divided by that number multiplied times the length of the column. So before you recall we had, for a pipe, we had like 111 and we said for the lightly loaded situation, we said that's not very efficient and you can see why now because now our pipe column is supporting 577 times its own self weight. So now we're going to go look for the square tube. Again we're at an effective length of 14 feet and we're looking for 440 so this works and we come along here and this works and this says 48.8 that says 47.8 if we go to well, I don't have it here but if we went to an 8 by 8 we discover that anything that works there is heavier and I'm sorry that that uh, table was left out here but we're going to go with the lightest one here 
which is an HSS 10 by 10 by 3 8 inch wall and it weighs 47.8 pounds per foot and it's, it has a design axial strength and capacity in, in compression of 456. So when we go to the table, we put the 456 here. We put the weight per linear foot of 47.8, which we got from up here. And again, we get an efficiency. And you'll notice that in this case, the efficiency of the square tube is significantly, but not profoundly, better than the pipe. Now we're going to go look for um, wide flanges. Again, we're at an effective length of 14 feet. We're looking for 440. This one just barely does it. We could go look at W12 buys, but there's nothing lighter. And there's also nothing better at W10 buys. So we're going to say this is a W10 by 49, which weighs 49 pounds per foot. And it supports or has a design strength and axial compression of 440 kips. So we put the 440 here, the 49 pounds per foot there, and again take the ratio. Now when we look at these numbers, we see that the weakest is this. It's the low stress grade material, only 35 kips per square inch yield stress. Um, this is 46 kips per square inch, and this is 50. If this was a pure fat column, we'd expect this one to be the best performer <coughs> because it has the highest yield stress. So we're in a kind of intermediate zone here where it's pretty darn heavy and yield stress is the dominant issue, but there's still some intermediate behavior where there is some buckling influence which is reducing the strength slightly so the wide flange is not quite as good as the HSS square. Um, these are heavily loaded columns that have relatively fat proportions and their load carrying capacity and efficiency are more influenced by the yield stress of the material than by the efficiency of the cross section and the resisting buckling. So the HSS square tube with FY F yield equal to 46 KSI and the wide flange with FY or F yield equal to 50 KSI have substantially higher stress capacity, yield stress than the 35 KSI steel. So they're performing much better. <clears throat> now if we go back and compare that one more time, you'll notice that we have efficiencies which is the weight carried per self-weight on the order of 500 uh, and 50 to 700. <clears throat> Very large numbers. Previously, we had a best of 165 with 111 being more typical. This is uh, hearkening back to our lightly loaded condition where we said, um, Buckling is substantially undermining the capacity of this column to carry load and as a consequence we're not seeing a very high column efficiency. Still it's pretty amazing that even for a slender column that's vulnerable to buckling, the column here for example is carrying, capable of carrying uh, 165 times its own self weight but that's nowhere near as good as 681 times its own self-weight. <clears throat> so we see a phenomenon here that's actually quite common, that more heavily loaded members, and we're going to find this not just for columns, but for trusses. Trusses have axially loaded members in them, and so have some resemblance to columns in their behavior. The more heavily loaded the member is, the more structurally efficient it's going to be. And that's because it takes on fat proportions and tends to be less vulnerable 
to buckling. So <clears throat> we have this world of options from a steel framing point of view. We can use uh, wide flanges, double angles, these so-called open sections. These are very cheap to make. <clears throat> they don't have to be curled on top of themselves and welded together and so forth. They're just rolled out. Um, and we can use them for columns or struts and, and trusses or whatever. Um, they tend to be more vulnerable to torsional failure. They tend to be more vulnerable to buckling, but they have certain advantages because in addition to being inexpensive, they're also very easy to make connections to. We can come along and drill holes through the flanges or holes through this web and make all kinds of bolted connections. If we do that here, if we drill a hole, we have to drill it all the way through. And then if we put a nut on one side, and run the bolt all the way through the tube, the people in the field will simply crush the tube, cranking the bolt up tighter and tighter. So <clears throat> connections are more difficult on closed sections and closed sections are more expensive to make. So clearly there are advantages and disadvantages to all these sections. And the question becomes, why do we see some of these columns in some places and not in others? So <clears throat> as a general rule, once you've gone to two stories, the loads are large enough and the columns are inherently fat enough that you're almost always going to do, deal with wide flanges. That's particularly true because we'd like to have our columns as continuous as possible. So in addition to um, the uh, desire to have the uh, higher stress capacity steel because we have heavier loads, it's also much easier to make bolted connections at these intermediate levels. So it's very rare you ever see a two-story building with any kind of closed section, such as an HSS square or a round pipe. On the other hand, if you go into a, a big box store where you have really light loads and a tendency towards slender proportions because of the height of the space, and also you only have connection issues at the top then you're almost always going to see a square tube or a round tube or a round pipe. Uh, in some cases you're going to see examples of extremely long columns with very light loads. So for example in this building this column right here is only going to support an amount of roof that's pretty minimal or let's take this column is supporting a little tiny patch of roof like that and it's a really really tall column so in this case they didn't even settle for a, a square tube or a round pipe they basically articulated the thing by making this very large trust column which they didn't mind doing because they were actually going for this very monolithic heavy look so these columns right here have been clad in stone over here to produce this final result. So <clears throat> where you have really heavy loads, you're going to tend to pick less efficient cross sections with higher stress grades of material. Where you have very light loads, you're going to tend to create the most efficient cross section you can and you're much less concerned about the stress grade of the material. That ends our series of three videos on sizing steel columns from chapter five, section three. Video A, the first video, was on setting up the methodology and explaining how the tables were created, the uh, column sizing tables. Uh, video B, was on sizing columns for light load cases and video C is on sizing columns for heavy load cases and in the process we have pointed out some important key material properties one of which is the yield stress tends to be really important 
for heavily loaded situations that lead to intrinsically fat column proportions and the stiffness of the material tends to be the material property of greatest concern for long slender columns that are lightly loaded and therefore inherently have a tendency towards slender proportions.